We're making our way by ferry towards Harris from the island of Bernary. We arrive at the south side of the island at the village of Leverborough. It feels like an unlikely destination for my appointment to meet John Marr, the ex-drummer of legendary punk band The Buzzcocks. John gave up Manchester for island life 14 years ago. Hello, John. Good to meet you. You too. <laughs> Coffee. Cheers. How did you end up here in Harris? Uh, well, I started coming up on holidays, just came, kept coming back, and eventually thought, yeah, just, just do it, see what happens. <laughs> now, we both share a, a love of photography, and we're very intrigued to hear about your latest exhibition. Mm -hmm. The photographs are all of um, abandoned croft homes. The first time I ever wandered inside one of these houses and saw that there were a lot of personal belongings left behind, clearly been like that for you know, 10, 20 years or whatever, and apart from, you know, nature continuing to take its toll. That's it's amazing. still there. Could we go and see one? Yeah. Great, all right. Yeah, yeah. Andiamo. Around a thousand homes lie empty on the Outer Hebrides. Many of them have stayed that way since their owners died or moved away. John's brought me to one he documented for his exhibition called Nobody's Home. Welcome. Wow. God, they literally just walked away. Even the calendar, 1997, it was that recent. Oh, so, yeah. Gosh, and it's amazing that people have just left it, isn't it? Yeah. The custard creams. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. They've just left their biscuits, their actual biscuits. Uh, what I like so much about it, I think, is that you, you, you couldn't create this. This, this is real. Yeah, this you is know. pretty real. Do you know what the story of this one is? The people who lived there, I, th I, th I think the, the father of the house got a job working away on the mainland. They used to come back once a year, and they used to come in here, and they'd light a fire in the stove, and they'd just sort of sit down and basically sort of think about the old days, it was like a little pilgrimage that they'd do once a year, or wh as, as and when they could. Gosh. We've heard a number of different reasons for people leaving them. The government uh, subsidised people to help them move away to Australia in search of work. So I was contacted by a girl. She went through that. She was told by her parents, we we're only allowed one suitcase each. That was all she could take with her, and everything else was left. Right. Wow. You have an interest in photography as well. Yeah. It's snap away. I actually love taking pictures in places that people go, why did you take a picture of that? And actually I think, well, it's because there's something I like about it or there's something beautiful about it. And some of my favorite pictures are ones that are kind of unremarkable, but there's something that just all works in them. Yeah. Okay, I'll uh, leave you alone and let you get some photographs of your own. <laughs> okay. Thanks right. so much. It's yeah. really lovely nice to, meet to meet you, John. You. Take care. See you. Bye. See you. So much of it's kind of like reminds me of oops, reminds me of lots of Scottish homes, my home, traditional layout and the pots and things. When I was a little boy, my auntie used to always tell me that the Loch Ness monster w came to visit her, and I'd always, whenever we arrived, I'd always just just miss Nessie. And I was like, no, and she said, she goes, oh, one time she said, oh yeah, she just you just missed the Nessie every. Every, for 11 says every day Nessie comes up here and she has a cup of tea and a, and a rich tea biscuit. And there's rich tea biscuits in the thing right there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 1997 was a momentous year for me. I moved to New York to star on Broadway in the musical Cabaret and it turned my life upside down. It's still like, what? You know, and also at the same time, it's just my life, just, you know. I mean, that's why I'm, I think I'm, I have a healthy outsider's almost cynicism about it, but I, it's also just what I, my day-to-day -day life. But I think it's good to be able to stand out outside of it and be able to comment on it. And it's healthy. It's healthy to be an outsider, actually. And maybe in a way that's when you're on the edge of 
the world like this or on the edge of you know Scotland these people in this these islands are outsiders they're looking back at us and maybe that's what makes them so soulful and fascinating but yet they just walk away from them, leave all their biscuits lying around what moves me the most from what I've seen today is that people physically left these islands within my lifetime taking their history with them and yet somehow by leaving parts of their story behind it feels like they still remain here frozen in time I realize I like bleak beauty. I'm making my way north on the east coast of Harris on the Golden Road, which was given its name as it cost so much to build. It serves the scattered settlements around the bays, but Harris is probably best known for its west coast, where you'll find stunning beaches, including the world renowned Luskentire Sand. I'm enjoying my roller coaster ride here, where the change in scenery is astounding. The landscape's getting much rockier, and uh, yeah, it's getting a bit more sort of lunar. The predominant rock here is called Lewisian Gneiss. It's a metamorphic rock which is three billion years old, making it the oldest rock in Europe and one of the oldest in the world. It's said that it's similar in composition to rocks found in the mountains of the moon. But never mind the moon. I fancy having my lunch on Jupiter. In 1968, Stanley Kubrick released his epic sci-fi film, 2001, A Space Odyssey, widely considered to be one of the most influential films in history. But did you know that he chose Harris right here as the location for Jupiter? I didn't. That was terrifying. <laughs> 